Hi everyone, in this video we will talk about how we can do differential and integral calculus on surfaces. The first step is to make a very important observation. Assume we have a surface and two charts, phi and psi, with domains u and b respectively. Then we can construct a map psi inverse phi from a subset of u to r2. We call this map a change of coordinates. I'll leave it to you to check, using the inverse function theorem, that this map is smooth. Then we can define what does it mean for a continuous function f from a surface to r k to be smooth. We say that f is smooth if whenever we compose f with a chart, we get a smooth function from an open subset of the plane to r k. Due to the observation above and the chain rule, this definition does not depend on the chart we use. That is, if we consider a function f from sigma to r k and two charts phi and psi with the same image, then f composed with phi is smooth if and only if f composed with psi is smooth. This is because we can write f composed with phi as f composed with psi composed with a change of coordinates and vice versa. Now that we know who these smooth functions are, we would like to talk about their derivatives. For this purpose, we need to introduce the concept of tangent planes. Given a surface sigma, a parametrization phi, and p equals phi of q in the image of phi, we can define the tangent plane to sigma at p, denoted by tp sigma, to be the two-dimensional plane spanned by the vectors partial phi with respect to u and partial phi with respect to v at q. The vectors in this plane are called the tangent vectors to sigma at p. Remember that from the definition of parametrization, these two partial derivatives are linearly independent, so indeed this is a two-dimensional plane. For each point p in sigma, we have a tangent plane tp sigma, which depending on the context, we will think of it as a plane on top of sigma or as a vector subspace of R3 passing through the origin. Of course, something that we should check is that this definition is independent of the parametrization that we are using. In order to do that, we introduce an alternate definition that does not depend on the parametrization and check that it coincides with the one given here. Consider all smooth regular curves in sigma passing through p at time zero. Then we take the set of all their velocity vectors at time zero. We claim that this set is precisely the tangent plane to sigma at p. First, we check that any vector of the tangent plane is obtained this way. A vector w of the tangent plane has the form a partial phi with respect to u plus b partial phi with respect to v. We need to find the curve in the surface passing through p whose velocity at that time is w. We consider the line in the uv plane given by q plus t times a comma b and define gamma of t to be phi of this line. By the chain rule, we see that gamma prime at zero is precisely the vector w. This shows that the tangent plane to sigma at p is contained in the set of velocity vectors of curves passing through p. Now we check the other contention. In principle, there are a lot of curves passing through p, but we will see that all their velocity vectors live in the tangent plane to sigma at p. Whenever we take a regular curve gamma and sigma with gamma of zero equals p, then, by continuity, after restricting the curve to a small interval around zero, we can apply phi inverse to it and get a curve alpha in the uv plane. Since now gamma equals phi of alpha, again by the chain rule we can write gamma prime at zero as a linear combination of the partial derivatives of phi whose coefficients are precisely the components of alpha prime at zero. This concludes the proof that the tangent plane to sigma at p coincides with the set of all velocities of curves in sigma passing through p. Now we can talk about derivatives of smooth functions. For a smooth function f from sigma to rk and the tangent vector w, we take a smooth curve gamma in sigma with gamma prime at zero equal to w. The directional derivative of f in the direction w is defined as the derivative of f composed with gamma at zero. We will see that this definition does not depend on the curve gamma, and moreover, when we restrict this function to a single tangent plane, it is a linear function from the vector space dp sigma to rk, which we denote by dpf. To prove this, take a chart phi around p. Then f composed with gamma can be factored through phi. 
That is, if we set alpha to be phi inverse composed with gamma, then f composed with gamma is f composed with phi composed with alpha. Applying the chain rule to this composition, we can write the derivative of f in the direction w as a linear combination of the derivatives of f composed with phi, whose coefficients are the components of the derivative of alpha at zero. This does not only show that the quantity on the left is independent of gamma, but that it depends linearly on the coefficients of w when we express it in the basis of tp sigma given by the partials of phi, which is exactly what we wanted to show. Before we move to integral calculus, let us notice that if we have a smooth map f from sigma 1 to sigma 2, then for p in sigma 1, the derivative dpf is a linear map from the tangent plane to sigma 1 at p to the tangent plane to sigma 2 at f of p. Now, given a linear function between vector spaces, we can quantify how much it distorts the area. This is given by the Jacobian, which, if the domain and codomain have the same dimension, coincides with the absolute value of the determinant. For a smooth function f from sigma to rk, its Jacobian at a point p is defined to be the Jacobian of the linear function dpf. With this notion, one can define the area of a surface covered by a single chart as the integral over the domain of the parametrization of the Jacobian of the parametrization. I'll leave it as an exercise to you to check two things. First, that this Jacobian is precisely the length of the cross product of the partial derivatives of the parametrization, and that this notion of area is independent of the parametrization. We can similarly define integrals. If a region R is covered by a parametrization phi, the integral of a continuous function f over the region R is defined to be the integral over the preimage of R in R2 of the function f composed with phi multiplied by the Jacobian of the parametrization. Again, I leave it to you to check that this notion does not depend on the parametrization we use. This is just a reformulation of the classic change of variables formula for integrals over regions in R2. If R is a region not covered by a single chart, we subdivide it into regions R1, R2, and so on, so that each Ri is covered by a single chart, and then define the integral of the function f over the region R as the sum of the integrals of the function f over the regions Ri. This sum is going to be well-defined and independent of the decomposition of R into smaller regions under mild conditions such as R being compact or F being non-negative. And finally, with this notion, one can define the area of a general surface to be the integral of the constant function 1 over the entire surface. And that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Next time we will see what we can do with these tools of differential and integral calculus.